Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to my deep guide. And in today's video, it's going to be just a short check uh, on or basically, you know, acknowledgement that books has announced the new devices for their fall lineup, something that we've come to expect from them on a fairly regular basis. I'm sure that by now you've you're familiar with what comes out. So in this video, I'm just going to cover the basics and give you my take on um, yeah, my expectations and my take on each of the three devices uh, that books has announced for the October release. All right, so let's start with the Palma 2. Same housing, same everything as we've seen before. What are the major differences between Palma and Palma 2? And we can see that we do not have a transition to a 1300 uh, Carta screen. So we have the exact same screen as on the Palma. We have 300 PPA, uh, PPI re screen resolution. We have upgraded octa-core CPU, BSR still as a part of it. So, and I'm assuming that it's not going to be bypassable so the battery performance implications of a uh, device that's using BSR technology are still going to pre be present on Palma 2 as well. It has an adjustable front light like the other one, micro SD card slot. The new addition is that the power button now or fingerprint lock is either on the power button or maybe on the screen. Most likely it's going to be on the power button, not really sure about that. Auto rotation present, 6 gigabytes of RAM, 128 gigabytes of storage, of course expandable via micro SD card slot and we do have the same battery the only meaningful thing here is that we have an upgrade to Android 13 on the Palma 2 and no this is not something that you will be able to see on the Palma and why is that is it because Palma can't handle it no of course it can handle it but it is the licensing issues so basically the old octa-core CPU has licensing uh, agreement with Google to go on only up to Android 11 as the upgraded octa-core CPU has upgraded licensing thing and it allows it to go up to Android 13 but it will not be upgradable to Android 14 or more. It has built-in Google Play Store so it is a Google Play certified device which is excellent and same housing as before and same weight as before with the main difference in pricing being that Palma 2 34 US dollars more expensive. You are approaching 300 US dollars here so that's definitely something that I would have to kind of keep in mind if I were considering either one of these uh, as contenders whether or not Palma 2 Two makes it worthwhile to approach the $300 uh, dollar mark as the default one is 246 US dollars. Other than that, we have pretty much all the same stuff. We have the camera on the back, flip fold fold case. We have black and white versions. Uh, promised to be available because there were some issues with the availability in the beginning of Palma 1 with the white one which looks really really nice and you have all of the standard stuff and one thing to keep in mind is that while this looks like an e-ink smartphone it is not it is a portable reader because it does not have same functionalities so you can't actually use it as a smartphone. I assume that one of the differences being uh, between Palma 2 and Palma 1 and when they say flexible widgets that's something that's associated with the uh, announced books OS 4. So I'm pretty sure that this one is going to come out with the books OS uh, version 4 out of the box and that that can be one of the meaningful differences when you're considering whether you should uh, take uh, Palma or Palma 2 into consideration. Okay, next one in line will be the big one, which is the Note Air 4C. And uh, basically, this is simply an iterative upgrade, an update to the Note Air 3C. Some people are not going to like that, and some people like myself are going to understand it as what it is, because in my opinion, Note Air 3C and the Note Air line is already really, really good and they have an excellent formula there that there's no need to change it unless it's broken. So, the improvements that it actually brings to the table are iterative, but they could prove to be 
important. So what are the improvements here? I'm just going to scroll all the way down here so that we can compare directly to the Note Air 3C. So we have the same Kaleido 3 color screen on paper, but actually it is a newer generation of a Kaleido 3 screen that is supposed to be a little bit better and a little bit improved. Whether or not that's the case will, remains to be seen because I have my own Note Air 3C personal one that I'm using now for well over a year and I'm really happy with it. And when the review device comes with a Note Air 4C, I'll be able to compare them back to back and see if there are any meaningful differences between the screen quality and brightness or whatever it may be between the two. Uh, we do have the same octa-core uh, kind of CPU, BSR still there. I'm pretty sure that it's not going to be uh, toggleable, as they would most likely mention that as a big thing. Adjustable front light, micro SD card slot, fingerprint lock, auto rotation. We have a bump in RAM, so we have a bump from four gigabytes of RAM to six gigabytes of RAM. Unfortunately, we still have sixty-four gigabytes of storage which is the same thing as we had on the Note uh, 3C, but honestly, does it really matter that much with the ability to use any cloud service and having micro SD card slot? Mm, not really something that I personally, I don't think that it matters that much. We have the same battery. It supports the Books Magnetic Stylus. It supports the Books magne Magnetic Case. And the nice thing about it is they haven't changed things from what I can see because the Magnetic Case here still supports the vertical or the portrait orientation, which was a major, major advantage of the Note Air 3C. So it's a good thing to see that they are not changing that fact and that they are sticking with it because it's a really, really important point for quite a few users. Uh, it comes with the Android 13, so that means that it's using an updated version of the octa-core CPU because it has an updated license to allow it to go up to Android 13. Built-in Google Play Store, so like the Note Air 3C, it is a Google Play certified device, allowing you to use the full Android uh, functionality. And the same housing with 5.8 millimeter thick thickness and and they've managed to actually shave 10 grams off the uh, Note Air 4C somehow. I don't really know how, but they are stating that it's 10 grams lighter than the Note Air 3C, and the price is identical, which probably means that Note Air 3C is either going to be phased out or that it's, you know, already discontinued, we will see how that goes. And one other major difference between the Note Air 3C and the Note Air 4C is that the Note Air 4C comes with the Books, uh, Books OS 4 version out of the box, while uh, it remains to be seen when and if, well, normally, you know, Books devices receive their updates all, you know, for years and years to come. And considering that Note Air 3C is only about a year or so old, I would imagine that the Note Air 3C is going to get the OS 4 version as well at some point. But I don't think that they're going to rush to actually do that until they've had their, you know, Q4 sales of the Note Air 4C and only then. So I imagine that the Note Air 3C will get the update to OS version 4, but I don't really think that they're going to do it uh, before early 2025. Other than that, there are no significant differences uh, that you may find between the Note Air 3C and 4C. Does the new iteration of the Note Air, does it keep all of the stuff, performance, latency, and all that kind of stuff, does it keep it on par uh, as Note Air 3C, or does it compromise somewhere or not? So is it the same? Is it better? Is it worse? Those are all the things that I will have to kind of uh, dig deep into when I receive the review sample device. And I am going to receive it uh, fairly soon because it's already been shipped. So hopefully it's coming soon. And of course we have for me personally, the most exciting announcement of their devices and that is Note Max. I can't tell you how long I have waited for this type of a device and the fact that they've done it so that it's basically like the Go 10.3, which as you can see is here on my desk as a regular device that I'm using on a daily basis, to actually have that, the same thing just scaled up, 
in this format is incredibly exciting for me. Now, so far they haven't released too much details, but there's a few things that are actually interesting to kind of see that are very, very exciting. First of all, their SEO is already prepared. And if you go and you go like books, note max, and you check out the SEO data here, it says that it's a 13.3 inch with 300 PPI. So this beauty is a 13.3 inch screen with 300 PPI and a 1300 uh, Carta screen, which we already now know it performs really, really well and offers excellent image quality and clarity um, that we've seen on the Go 10.3. Now they call it Note Max, but this is essentially Go 13.3. Um, but okay, whatever. <laughs> what they're doing with the naming conventions is very, very strange. But here are the things that I'm kind of really hoping for is that Note Max doesn't have a front light. I'm really, really hoping for that. I'm not entirely certain of that because uh, even from this image here, I can see a little bit of, uh, yeah, of an edge here, but maybe. Maybe it would be the case because if it is, then the image quality and clarity that we're going to see should be on par with the Go 10.3, which is currently the best you can find on the market of any device. Uh, yeah, bar none. I mean, it really overshadows any other competitor as far as crispness, contrast and image quality and clarity by a big, big margin. And imagine if you can actually have that quality on the Note Max, well, that would be fantastic. However, I'm not so sure. I think that they're going to kind of succumb and they're going to put a front light in there, uh, which, yeah, you know, okay, fine, I get it. People want a front light, but the price of it, the, that distance between the surface of the screen to the ink is something that doesn't really make me excited. Um, the thing that does make me excited is the overall design, that it's exactly the same like a Go 10.3 and I think that it's excellent because Go 10.3 is a lovely, lovely looking device and this also promises to be a lovely looking device. And the final thing that I really, really like uh, is that here you have the addition of a keyboard cover for the uh, Max 13 or uh, Note Max. And here it makes perfect sense because unlike for 10.3 inch devices where you have a very small footprint and the keyboard is really cramped and uncomfortable and all that kind of stuff, here we have 13.3 inch and that allows for a decently sized width or and dimensions for the uh, keyboard along with a really, really large and comfortable looking uh, trackpad as well. So this in total seems to be like something that can be very, very promising and very exciting. Now, I have longed for a replacement for the Tab X for a very, very long time. Now, I do like the Tab X as a format and as what it can do. But as I commented in my review, I don't like its design. I think it's dated and I don't think that it's uh, suitable for a current top tier 13.3 inch device of the books lineup. It's simply too dated. But the biggest problem of all for me was the screen resolution and 207 PPI, which was simply too low for a screen like this to be effectively used on a daily basis. And on top of that, there was also the screen itself. The surface of the screen was too reflective. So I had to find a uh, paper-like screen protector that kind of helps but not so much, so it's a compromise. So I'm really hoping that Note Max, my personal hopes are that it doesn't have a front light, that it has the same uh, screen surface like the Go 10.3 does, and that it has the same type of writing latency performance or better than we see on the Go 10.3. If it does have those things, then that will probably be the device that I've been looking for for a very, 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 very long time. All right, so if you haven't noticed by now, out of all of these three, Palma 2, I acknowledge it and that's about it, but I do acknowledge that it's useful and people, some people will definitely like the fact that it's coming out, it's, you know, 
I'm pumped up and all that kind of stuff. Note Air 4C, I get it and I think it will make sense only if that uh, screen has been improved in a significant way so that it actually brings things up. Otherwise, it's a little bit of a, you know, just like a iterative update um, and but for me absolutely it's the note max that steals the show uh, of this announcement and the one that i am uh, most anxious about uh, testing and checking out because early indication is for me personally at least that this might well be a device that i've been looking for for very 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 many years so uh, yeah, expectations are very high uh, from my side for the Note Max and uh, we'll see how that goes. I can confirm that at the very least the Note Air 4C and the Max will uh, appear on uh, my deep guide and I will ask about Palma as well because I think that it warrants uh, checking things out and bringing you an in-depth review of all of these three devices. I hope that you found the video useful and or informative. If you did, please like and subscribe and ding the notification bell in the description below to get notified when new videos come out on my deep guide. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy and see you in the next video. Bye.